Greetings and welcome back to Doctor Who Revisited, where I go through every single episode of Doctor Who from 1963 all the way up to 2022 and review them. And uh, th now we're back to the regular six-part serials with The Seeds of Death. Not to be confused with The Seeds of Doom, that is a Tom Baker story. The Seeds of Death is an Ice Warrior story. There we go, I handled that part uh, straight off the bat. Now sort of elephant in the room here up first it's basically kind of the same as the tenth planet only except instead of Cybermen we get the Ice Warriors they pretty much just swap out the Cybermen for the Ice Warriors so yeah their home planet is dying they need to find a new place to live and their place is on Earth and they do that through a space station of sorts so in a way, this, this episode really does tend to copy the 10th planet a lot, but I would say that this episode does has enough elements in it to make itself unique and stand out from it. First of all, and there's something interesting that I've noticed just now, this episode literally takes place a hundred years after the events of the 10th planet. like. I'm pretty sure, yeah, uh, Ten Planet was, what, 1986? And this episode is around 2086. So, uh, that's an interesting bit of uh, trivia. It's a further connection between those two stories. Apparently, the Earth doesn't learn from its mistake, and it keeps ha going through the same problems over and over again, and the Doctor keeps having to save everyone, but I digress. So, first of all, Let's talk about the positives of the episode. I love a lot of the concepts that this episode introduces, particularly with the TMAT system and how it revolutionizes uh, travel in between different places. I love, I love that everyone can just travel from one place on Earth to the other and back and forth between the moon. You don't have to actually send astronauts out into space for three days to get to the moon which is fine. Full disclosure, this episode, or rather this serial, I should say, aired on, on the same year that the moon landing happened. Still a couple of months earlier, but it's still pretty significant in that regard, I would say. Another really great thing that I'd say in this episode's favor is the fact that it really kind of predicted the future, in a way. And let me explain what I mean by that is that, for those of you who don't know, after the moon landing, the space race was kind of over, in a way. The, the, the space race was mainly just the United States and Russia trying to see who could get to the moon first. So, you know, they had they had the first the first satellite in space, first animal in space, uh, like, obviously, first man in space, first woman in space, and then the first man on the moon. And then after the first man on the moon, there still was a lot of space presence. They still send people to space and to the moon. It's just, you know, it sort of died down in the public perception and people just became less interested in space travel after that. It's only in relatively recent years that we really went back to focusing on space travel, except this episode really kind of takes it up a notch and say that people just did not care about space travel anymore once TMAT was established. Like, once you can travel from one place to the other without having to spend uh, hours in traffic or to get to the moon without having to organize space travel people just stop using cars, they stop using planes they stop using spaceships and they just start using TMAT which in a way it is a perfect perfect encapsulation of human society as it is today as soon as new technology happens and revolutionizes something, people just stop using everything else and putting all of their eggs into one basket and everything else just gets faded away, you know? Don't believe me? How about physical media? Eh? How about public phones? You see where I'm going with this here? So basically, this episode in many, many ways predicted the future. And something else that I think is a little bit intentional on the episode's part is that it sort of has a connection with another Patrick Troughton story, The Moon Base, which, if you actually look it up, it takes place about 16 years before this episode in 2070, which in a way is 
about 30 years after Kill the Moon, where people st again stopped caring about space exploration. Stop if you've heard that one before. But they went back into space for a little bit. They sent people to Mars in, 20 in 2059 with the waters of Mars. But then by the 2080s, they just stopped caring about space travel all over again. Obviously, all these episodes happen in completely different eras, and there really is no indication of any con connectivity or continuity between any of them. But it's a nice thought to think that maybe there is some connection between these four completely separate and unrelated episodes. That being said, the Ice Warrior's plan, I think, was done really, really well. Use the Earth's technology, and more specifically, their most popular technological advancement to their own demise. It would very much, much be similar to how, I don't know, an alien would use the Wi-Fi as a weapon. You know, because people love using the Wi-Fi, they use it all over. It, wouldn't it be nice if an alien entity could weaponize Wi-Fi against humanity? Again, stop me if you heard that one before, but the Ice Warriors using the, 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 the most popular technological advancement being team at at the time, to, the, uh, to their advantage and to take down humanity, I'd say it's a great villain plan. And how they employ it is by taking over the one place that controls everything because once again, people put all their eggs into one basket. Only one station is in the entire world. It's not even on the world, it's on the moon. Only one station in Earth's orbit is needed to operate TMAT. And so we don't have any other contingency plans whatsoever. We, we only rely on that one. What could possibly go wrong? This could go wrong. So yeah, they use these seed pods, and now we finally get an explanation as to why the episode is called the Seeds of Death, all of a sudden. But yeah, these seed pods are transported into these major, uh, major populated areas. They burst and start covering the world in fungus, which right off the bat, I can dare, I dare say, much better use of villainous foam than Fury from the Deep. And, and again, it's probably I'm probably judging it unfairly because Fury from the Deep is a missing episode. I understand that, but I think the the weaponization of the foam is actually much more effective in this episode. And the fact that the Doctor gets the full blast of the gas from the uh, from the seed right into his face and survives is another sort of suggesting his Time Lord biology and his ability to survive certain things that maybe. Uh, other characters in this in the show couldn't. Maybe it's the early draft of what will eventually be the uh, respiratory bypass that was introduced in the John Pertwee era. Who the hell knows what, what they were thinking with that one? But speaking of what the hell they were thinking of, um, so the guy teammates the doctor away, presumably to a point between the Earth and the Moon to die, and then the other people in the Moon base just recovered his body and put him on a table it's like eh? what ha what the hell what happened there it, it seems like there was a scene that could have been in there to explain away that and uh, uh, what how did that happen but regardless it happened you know the doctor is safe we can continue on with the episode if they killed him off in the middle of the serial probably wouldn't have been uh, as effective but whatever so, that is probably the biggest plot hole in the story, but other than that, the rest of the story uh, pretty much stands on its own legs. It's, it's a really good showcase of the way the Ice Warriors think, and th speaking of the Ice Warriors, I love the redesign of their leader, Slar. The, I like that general shaping, I, I love the fact that these they introduced the, the idea of Ice Warrior hierarchy this early in, in their... Uh, development and I, and I love that the Grand Marshal, as they're calling him, his helmet design is slightly different. I like that in my A Doctor Who alien races. I love it when they introduce people from the same race, but but they make a point in making uh, the ones who are higher up in the ranks stand out and you know and look different. I like that whenever Doctor Who uh, delves into these realms. I think I pretty much covered all the points. I mean. The idea of sending the Ice Warriors into an orbit around the sun, yeah, that seems a little too similar to the moon base once again, another Siren Man story, so, yeah, 
uh, this episode really does bo borrow a lot from both the 10th planet and the moon base. You know, case in point, there is literally a base on the moon in this episode, which may or may not be related to the moon base from the uh, moon base episode. I will say this, that, that I, I believe that the moon, the, the base on the moon where Team Matt is being controlled from is called Moon Base 2. I think they mentioned it at some point during the episode, which, you know, kind of suggests that there is another moon base on the moon from that episode. Again, there's connect, there's connectivity and continuity if you really want to stretch the definition. But, you know, it is what it is, and sometimes with Doctor Who, that is all we get. I liked the episode a lot, and but really, it's just, I just love seeing the Ice Warriors. And, you know, this, even though the story is a bit generic and borrowed from other stories from the Doctor Who canon, even from the same era, it's still pretty fun. And, uh, you know, great. I, I'd say great use of some of the sets and some of the props. Speaking of props, I love seeing the star chart from uh, the... Uh, from the web planet making up making an appearance again Gr really great great to see that but uh yeah that's kind of it for the episode and uh yeah so the seeds of death what did you think about it let me know in the comments below and i will see you some other time goodbye hi there thank you for watching the video and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. I'll see you next time.